One reason CAD programs are superior in efficiency to hand drawings is their ability to reproduce line work rapidly. Most designs have line work that is repeated, especially in architectural design. If an architect wants to design an office building, why would they draw and redraw the same chair, sink, window, door, etc., while in CAD, all you have to do is copy it? Well, that's where the use of blocks come in. If you go to the Chapter 11 folder for the projects, open up the annotation drawing. We've used this drawing a couple of times, and it's going to look real familiar to you here now. But if you open this up, you'll see some examples of blocks. These chairs are blocks, these plants are blocks, these doors and the windows are all blocks. Blocks are a group of objects that are combined to form one object. Each part is still intact and can be manipulated, but only in the block editor. You go to the model tab here of this drawing. You can see here, when I pick this, I don't have the individual lines. I have one object and I can move it around, I can rotate it, I can copy it, paste it, etc. In the case of these doors, I can do even more than that. They're dynamic blocks. I can close the door. I can set it at a 45 degree angle. I can flip it. I can make it larger or smaller. I can do a whole bunch of things to it. That's a dynamic block. In all cases though, and on all types of blocks, each part is intact and can be manipulated. This allows for custom shapes and designs to be made and to act as one object. So if this chair wasn't a block, then we would have to grab every little bit of it in order to move it or to copy it or to edit it or anything. So it takes all of these parts and adds them together to make one chair. Blocks can be made out of any AutoCAD object. This chair here is made up of arcs and ellipses. When I pick it, it acts like it's just one chair. Here I have a grip, which is the insertion point. Every block has an insertion point. It's a point of reference for the block. The objects in a block can be created on any layer inside the block. If they're drawn on layer zero and drawn to by layer, then they'll take on the properties of the layer that the block is inserted on. That gives you a lot of flexibility and a lot of freedom. This chair is on the chair layer. If I switch it to the door layer, nothing happens. Why is that? Well, if I select a block and I right click on it, I can go to the block editor. If I pick the block editor button, this puts me in a special mode in AutoCAD where I've isolated just the line work for this block. You see, there's nothing else around here. The insertion point for a block is at the coordinate 0, 0, and I get a special block authoring palettes palette here. This lets you control the line work to create dynamic blocks. We're not going to talk about those right now. They're a bit complicated. Right now, I just want to show you block basics 101. But right now, let me move this out of the way we can see that this chair is drawn on the chair layer. So that means that every time I draw or copy or insert this chair block, it's always going to look magenta. So let's change that. I'll select all of the objects here in the block, switch it from layer chair to layer zero. Say, so, well, now it's always going to be black or white, depending on the background. That's not the case. Let's close the block editor, and we're going to save the changes to chair. This one's yellow. Why is that? Because it's on the door layer. Why this chair is on the chair layer. I can use the match properties and then make them all yellow because I've changed their layer. So well, I don't want them on the door layer. I want them on the plant layer. Now they're all red. So you can see you can do a lot of things with blocks very quickly. Or, in fact, I can go to the chair layer and I can change its color to blue. And now the chairs are all blue. That's the power of blocks. You can't do that on a board drawing. So make sure that when you draw with blocks, that you draw them all on layer zero. And then once you insert the block, you put the block on the layer you want it to be on. That way I can have two types of chairs.
let's say I have a chair layer, which I do. These are for my new chairs. Now let's say I have old chairs. We'll call this layer chair to be removed. And we're going to make it a different color. Let's say gray. And we're going to make the line type dashed, or let's go hidden. Let's say I have chairs that I need to get rid of. Let's say this row here. I can set their layer to chairs to be removed. And everything else is on the chair layer. So now when I go to my drawing, I can see that these chairs are a lighter color than this, and I need to do something with them. They're not highlighted like these new chairs are. Of course, then I can label them with a multi-leader or with some text and say, these chairs are to be removed. These are all new chairs. So you can do things like that with your layer manager, with your different layers and with blocks, and you can do them very quickly. It's a good practice to create a block library somewhere where you can keep and organize all of your blocks so that you can use them in the future. Put them on your network somewhere where you can get to them and where anyone else can get to them as well. Save them in the cloud on Autodesk 360. That way you'll always have them available for you when you want to use them. But make the blocks and make sure you can use them somewhere else. And I'll show you how to do that in another section.